I am Jim Collison, and this is Gallup's Called to Coach, recorded on October 17th, 2022. Called to Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches share tactics, insights, and strategies to help coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you're listening live and you don't see the chat room, there's a link for it right above me there. Click on that. It'll take you to the YouTube instance. Sign in and join us in chat. If you're listening after the fact and you still have questions, you can always send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app to call to coach or there on YouTube over in the corner there. Subscribe. This is the live channel. Subscribe to that on either one. That's so you never miss an episode. Dr. Jacqueline Robinson is our host today. She works as a learning and development consultant here with me at Gallup and was the host of season one. And we'll have an announcement at the end of this today about the future. We're excited <laughs> about that. Uh, but thanks for coming to Call the Coach and welcome back. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Hey, team. Good to see everybody again. Good to have you here as well. We are in part three of a three-part series, if you had missed it before. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been spending some time talking about challenges in the workplace. We spent some time talking about burnout. We spent some time talking about inclusion last month. Uh, yes. Now we're talking about re resiliency. And I, we, we've, we threw around this word about a year ago, I think, mm -hmm. as we were talking about this. And it's kind of fallen back, I think. I'm not hearing that word resiliency as much as I was before. And not yet, either. Jacqueline, I find myself in a situation today where I need to rethink my own resiliency. Because mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it's not a one and done, right? It's not yes. a, it's not a, hey, oh, yeah, okay, we, we won the war, right? It's not that kind of thing. We have to constantly be thinking about this. Let's get going a little bit on this. Talk to me a little bit. When we say resiliency, what do we mean by that? Um, oh, such a good question. I really see it as a way of being able to have hope and a sense of stability for your present moment, but also what's to come in the, in the future, and really a safety blanket that helps support you against adversity that you're going through in the here and the now or in the upcoming future. Um, and I feel like we've just been going down this path the last three years where we've had to, we've had to try to have this sense of resiliency for so long. And then, yeah, when people started getting more into, I guess they're, I'd say the new way of working because I know a lot have gone hybrid or they're back on site. Um, it just felt like it was okay. Let's go right back to the way things were before. <laughs> I think mentally everyone's like, no, I don't know if I can do that as much. Um, so we're seeing that resiliency, I feel, play out again where people are going, okay, what do I do? Because it's not working. What I used to do isn't working anymore. And I can't just go through life like we haven't just had the last three years happen mm -hmm. to us. So what can I put into place to feel like I have the sense of stability and can overcome, you know, problems in the here and now? I feel like we may be seeing an echo of of stress in, in all cultures globally mm -hmm. as I think we feel like there was this sense of we want to just get back to normal. Yes. And, and I think in that sometimes people can just say, well, just tough it out or just work harder or just, you know, we, we start telling ourselves or telling those that we're working with or, or, or organizations like, well, you have to kind of work through it. And that, I don't know yes. if that's, if that's, it's enough. Can you, I mean, as we think about that, how is this, if, if we are, if this thing is a bouncing effect, in other words, we go through periods of it, how can, how can we, or should we think differently about resiliency than just tough it out? Like just get better type deal. Ooh, that might even just amount to what do I, what am I going through in the here and now? And what does my body need? Um, I think that's a question we could always just ask ourselves is, you know, anytime we're depleted, what does my body need? Um, right now. And it speaks to us, you know, you need sleep or you need to eat or you need to go for a walk. And we just have to be a little bit more in tune to it. But once we know what that call out is, whether it's sleep or food or, or taking a walk or connecting with a person, then from that strength based approach, what strength is going to be most supportive and helping us with that given, you know, solution that's kind of calling out to us or crying out to us. 
yeah. So are you, so are I you think it's just constant checking in. We have to just constantly check in, but that's been hard for people because they've just been told, you know, get back to work and go, go, go. And mm-hmm. so Lisa's point in um, chat, we've been depleted and we can't go back to normal. So it's, we need a moment to really just, you know, process and think about what we need in the here and now. And we need to continue to have those check-ins available to us accountability partners, maybe to support us. So that's a question a coach could ask, right? Is hey, mm-hmm. is thinking someone going through this, what kind of theme or what strength could you be using right now to help prop you up? Let's, can, let's do a, let's kind of think through that one. And well, let me invite the chat room to answer that question. Like yes. what are you leaning into or what could you be leaning into when, when we think about your own resiliency for a mm-hmm. second, let's, let's frame this up today in, for ourselves. Let's not think about uh, coaches who are listening. You can take these questions, think about them and redeploy them in your own coaching mm-hmm. and what you're doing. But I think for today's purposes, let's spend a little time individually thinking about this. So Jacqueline, is it just as easy as thinking about, okay, so what is my, uh, what is my arranger maximizer need to be doing in this time? Like I find, I find great satisfaction or great inner being energized and re um, and fixing things or cleaning things up or creating new things. Is it stuff like that to really start figuring out what's going on inside of me and then start addressing it with some of those themes? That's a good question. I think if you've got heightened self-awareness, you can target what those talent themes are sometimes that are being overused or that want to be used a little bit more that sense of well-being. Um, I'd even, if I think about a question that I would probably start off with first and foremost, if someone's going through, you know, hard time and is looking for that sign of of resilience and how do I start to get a grip on this? um, I would ask, what is one of your strengths that you can grasp onto right now that can serve as a life jacket? Mm. And what is it about that theme that can support you? Um, So that might be, I think sometimes a little bit easier of a route to go than when you're already in a rut, trying to guess what theme is under that rut, if that makes sense. Instead, it's, okay, I know I'm in a rut. I need a life jacket. What theme is going to be my life jacket in this present moment? And how is it going to support me? Getting some comments in from the chat room. Um, uh, Teresa says, I lean into my purpose. Why am I really doing this? What's the meaning yes. of this for me, right? You're talking about that introspection. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Brown says, I'm with you, Lisa. I have to do a check-in with myself in the, in the new world, in quotes, in the five elements of well-being. And I think yes. that's an important, right? That's a maybe an important, that's like pulling the oil dipstick on an engine, you know, of pulling that Ooh, out. I like that a, visual. Like, hey, where are we with this kind of thing? Uh, thinking about that. He, that seems to be helping him. Jess says, in the past, I focused my strengths investment from a professional lens, uh, but where I felt most resiliency um, has been feeding into my strengths personally. And and we've spent some time, both you and I, last season in, in the well-being series, Micah and I, in the season six, thinking mm-hmm. about it's sometimes it's hard to separate those two, right? Mm-hmm. And I think we tried yes. to in the past, and for some people that doesn't go so well. And so maybe focusing on home or focusing on things outside of the workplace has a benefit to the same things in the workplace, right? Yes. I don't know, any, any comments on that? Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, we know it impacts us personally, impacts us professionally and, and vice versa. So I like that piece of, of digging deep from that personal level and the purposeful piece that we heard about too. What else can we do as you think about these questions that you have? What what yes. would be another question we could ask? Yeah. So first, if um, going back to that one, so we have what is one of your strengths that you can grasp onto right now that mm-hmm. can serve as a life jacket? And then once you have that life jacket on with that strength in mind, now that you've got that form of stability, what action at this exact moment can alleviate some of the strain? Um, so you're no longer feeling like you're drowning in the sense of, you know, what should I do? Um, I don't know what my next step looks like. You've got your life jacket on enough where you're starting to get those stress levels down, maybe more of that clarity mentally to go, okay, what's the first step I can take to get through this? 
And then I would even, you know, have you all think about going back to well-being, which some of you mentioned in, in chat, what well-being needs have been sidelined? Um, is there at least one of those that you can focus on to take back your sense of power and control? So step by step, we can start to, you know, really start to alleviate some of that strain that you might be feeling to, to rebuild that sense of resiliency. Back in the spring, um, I committed to just getting out the door mm -hmm. three mile loop every day and, and found great success in the consistently for me, listen, one of those, it was hard to get started, yes. but once I got going, I couldn't stop. Like then I, I started to be like, well, I can't miss my walk today. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't, it started getting colder, starting to get darker. I need to find a new pattern in that. Right. For me, it's all about finding these pa patterns that I can repeat for success. I yes. need, I'm so, this is one of the crazy things about this. I don't know if anybody else feels this way. I'm so adaptable that if I take adaptability to everything, like there's some things adaptability camp is not appreciated by in life, right? Like your budget <laughs> for is better like, the way <laughs> yes. you spend your money, right? <laughs> Consistency helps a little bit in that area, right? So I find those routines, those patterns help me. They, they give me a bedrock foundation for my well-being in the midst of all this other chaos, which is fine. I love mm -hmm. chaos. But I've got to have a few things centered, mm -hmm. right? It can't all be adaptability all the time, right? Yes. And so, and so, um, you know, for me, having nailing down some of that well-being first, I, I got to get my physical activity. We did some, I did some watch events with people where we competed and those kinds of things. I found is that is that what you mean by that when you think about what well-being needs have been sidelined and getting back to it? Yes. Yes. Um, and for some, it might be that you used to, you know, have a lot of family time and now work has taken over. And so that sense of social well-being isn't being well fed or you are more involved in your community pre-COVID. COVID happened, everything shut down and you were involved virtually. I know a lot of community events just went virtual. Um, so a lot of times, too, we've just kind of forgotten what we used to do that gave us that sense of home and familiarity and um you know, really helped us just feel stable. And when you're stable, it's a lot easier to get through, you know, any types of adversity. You, you kind of have that built-in resiliency factor in place. So it is kind of recalling a little bit of the past. What did I used to do? What do I want to do more of in terms of my, my elements of well-being? Because maybe I didn't do it pre-COVID, but now I'm having some aha moments as a result of COVID. And this is what I want to start getting involved in. Um. How is it going with you and your well-being, Jim, with your walks? Are you well, still consistent this, with those? The last <laughs> week. It's funny. I, I was I was telling you, Prisha, I really struggled over the weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. Just not, it just didn't feel very good. And not like sickness mm -hmm. feeling good. Just kind of like disheveled, if I can use that, like personally yes. disheveled. Well, I missed those. I missed all the walks last week. And that actually, now that we're talking about it, if I start looking back, that was a precursor to the weekend's kind of dishevelment of yes. thinking like, oh, yeah, I did. I missed the, when I would normally be in. The problem was, is the walk, the the reason that's not the right one, the mode at which I was walking changed. So I used to get out. It was light. I, mm -hmm. I walked through the cemetery. It's very peaceful. It was time for me to think, well, it's been getting darker and walking through the cemetery in pitch dark. Yes. Not that I'm worried about not that I'm worried about the dead. I'm more worried about the living <laughs> <laughs> at that point in there. Yes. Right? And I, I kind of got a little, I kind of got a little, I was like, ah, and so I needed to find, and listen, changing routes. I could easily just change routes, which is what I need yes. to do. But that, ha that habit had become so ingrained in me. It kind of threw me off a little bit. And I think for, for some individuals, and even, even though I have this high, high adaptability, when I do find a pattern that works, when it gets thrown off, it's, it's, it can be really bad. <laughs> wow. You know, me, right? There it is. You know? I'm curious what, um, oh, I didn't mean to cut you off there. What no, were no, you? No, keep going. Go ahead. Uh, going to say, I was, I was curious because you have so many themes that are flexible in nature. What themes help you create stability? What is it that oh, appreciates that sense of consistency? That's, that's an incredible question. And coaches, you should, you should write that question down. Cause as I think through, you know, I have all this 
influence up front with relationship mm-hmm. building six through 10. And I don't have a lot of those. I, I can use maximizer in some ways to, to kind of create more of something, but that, you know, that's a good question. Where does that stability come from? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not sure I know. I'm going to have to, I'm so gonna have curious. to spend some time reflecting on that. Maybe I'll get some, some post-show coaching from you on it as I kind of think through it. But Um, Lisa had asked a good question in chat. She says, is resiliency about regaining power and control or is it maybe for some about letting go of the need to control Yeah, a little bit of both? Yes. Maybe returning to (laughs) self-trust, right? I don't know. Jacqueline, what do you think? Magical dust of both. I love that because there is this piece too of needing to let go of that, that need of control. Um, I I love that self-trust. But for some, when you feel that wave of uh, panic or anxiety, feeling like you have a sense of power, because usually that panic is sometimes that loss of control or or loss of what is within the span of your control, you just feel so shaken. So maybe it is, maybe it's even layers too, as we, we kind of think through that, because once you trust yourself, you trust yourself enough to get through it and you're starting to create what you can do within your own locus of control. Well, and I think this gets down to the individual level. There's no, mm-hmm. like, uh, it, I, I like control. I don't like control. You know, mm-hmm. Nate makes a really good comment that I think he says, checking in with myself doesn't work for me, right? <laughs> yeah. I hired a friend to be my accountability partner. Sometimes that's what a coach is. It's just a hired yes. friend, right? I uh, have to give him an update every Saturday by 10 a.m. It's helped me achieve goals I've wanted, which I think is a great, that self-awareness, right? Of like, yes. yeah, no, that system doesn't work for me. Where first, a lot of people checking yes. in on themselves, just fine, right? Yes. You know? And then um, Lisa had brought up earlier too, checking in can be work sometimes. <laughs> it's like, oh. yes. And so if it feels like that's work because you're like, I'm just tired of being tired, there's accountability partners and coaches can be so helpful to just give you that additional pep talk or help you see how far you've come or help you rethink how you can get to that next step to Nate's point. Yeah. Um, pa- Pam makes an interesting comment. She says strengths that are outwardly focused can be hard to use as a life jacket because we don't bring yeah. that life jacket for ourselves. Right. And, and again, for some, maybe mm-hmm. for, I think that's that awareness of it. Um, you know, you would think I have high woo and high communication when things are a little, and I've kind of noticed it this weekend when things are a little off, mm-hmm. those go a little sideways on me. And generally they're a, they're not maybe a life jacket, but a warm, comfortable blanket that I feel mm-hmm. comfortable in, you know, just like, Oh, this is just gonna, this is going to be so great. And this weekend, yeah, like maybe I'll just go hide. <laughs> somewhere. Yes. I don't want to be around people. <laughs> I'm recharge. messing people things up. Like I should just go, I should just go away. <laughs> Take a vacation. And that's by myself. good self-awareness too. I think um, so. We can certainly burn ourselves out and lose that sense of resiliency. If we're over using our themes externally and not feeding ourselves internally. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Jacqueline, what other questions could we, you, you got a few more of these. What other questions uh, sure can we be do. asking? Um, so we've already talked about accountability partners. So another question we could ask folks is who's a good support system for you in the here and now, who is that good support system for you? And then who else can you consider for support? So is it a neighbor, a therapist, uh, you know, best friend at work, a family member, a friend, a cousin? Um, but who else do you have within your community that you can go to for support or an ear or thought partnership, et cetera? Any thoughts there? Yeah, I think this is where strengths really helps. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. not that it didn't help in these other things, but anytime you're creating these systems, these people systems, yes, and in this case, it's app. a support system, right? Of looking at the per- the other person and saying, and I, this is, I, I'm admitting, I don't do enough of this. I, mm-hmm. I kind of think I can do it intuitively. And so I just don't purposely ask for someone's top five when we're, doing when we're you know we're doing these kinds of things but i think getting that team map even if it's just two people yes and being intentional about hey your you work in this way i need this Mm -hmm. i'll bring this Hmm, sounds like an exercise that we have uh, bring a need right we spent (laughs) some time doing that and i think that's particularly important in these building these support systems right 
regardless yes. if it's one person or a group of people. I don't know. What what else do you think? I agree. Um, I've got one person, uh, well, a, a few in my team map, if I think about my who, who would be on my team map. And one leads high in harmony. And that's my 34th mm -hmm. theme. Mm -hmm. And so that's such a good pairing. Um, and he really helps me see how I'm feeding Achiever very often. So he can kind of talk me off that plank if Achiever's like, you haven't done enough today. There's more to do. Um, so he'll kind of walk me back and give me that pep talk I need and that that additional boost and help me find balance. I think some of that is maybe coming from his harmony where he can um, just through his own pep talks with me, give me a sense of balance. So yeah, uh, you know, those, those partnerships and friendships and family members that have strengths can be so supportive. Uh, Lisa had asked, uh, you mentioned TMAP and so did oh, I. When we say TMAP, yes. what do we mean by that? Yes. So I think um, we were actually blending two terms in our excitement. So <laughs> team grid, uh, for those that use the team grid, that can be highly applicable in the workplace. And, you know, now that we're thinking about personal lives too, I've always seen it used at work, but team grid would be really interesting to have it uh, just personally as well. What friends do you want to put on your team grid? What family members do you want to put on your team grid? Um, and then social map is what we would think about whenever you are considering the ecosystem you're in. So you're in the middle of it. Who's your mentor? Who's your export uh, expert? Who's your family friend? Um, you know, who is um, a role model for you? So the social map is just who is in that network that you should be socializing with. And then you really start to narrow it down. What's the frequency of these socializations um, what do I want to be discussing with them, et cetera? What other, uh, what other, as we think about these questions, what else can we be asking ourselves? What activities energize you? Um, and then how can you build more of this into your week? Yeah. So what a great way to ground ourselves when it feels like our head is spinning. Um, what energizes me and how do I get more of that in my life? And once we feel like we're in that flow, and our well-being starts to amplify. We know this from our discussions. Your strengths amplify. Your engagement amplifies. And then you feel like you really do have more of um, a grasp on just what's what's happening in your day-to-day -day and your ability to overcome that. How do you think? I've always wondered, as I think about this, these, this, these activities that energize us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like that can be a temporary emotion, right? We do something like I, 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 as soon as in the last couple months, everyone has been racing to do vacations, right? Yes. <laughs> we talked about this. <laughs> I mean, almost unreasonably in some, from my, that's, that's me speaking from my perspective, you know? Um, but we've, it's like, I got, I got to do it. I got to have it now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes I wonder, is that really like, is that really doing anything? Are we just doing that because we thought we needed it? Or are we really doing the things we need? And listen, I'm not here to judge anybody on, mm -hmm. on vacations or taking time off people. Everyone needs to do that. Right. But when do you think, how do you know, I guess this would be a question. How do you know when you're in an activity that energizes you longer than just during the activity? And maybe it's okay mm -hmm. if it's just during the activity, but how, how do you, mm -hmm. how would you know that? What signs should, would you be looking for? Do you think? I'm going to go back to good old well-being. Yeah. You feel that sense of well-being. Um, you feel like you are doing something more purposeful for some folks, even going back to the, the comment earlier, how that the sense of purpose or mission you have in life can be a good North star. Um, so it's always that gut check is what I tell people. Gut check yourself. How do you feel? Because if you feel great. You feel energized. You're working with ease, excellence, enjoyment. Um, you know, notate that because that's a sign that you're one leaning into your strengths, but you're finding something that excites you inside. Um, I'll usually recommend people have a journal that they keep for 30 days because that tends to um, encompass everything that, that you typically do day to day if you have something that you're tracking for 30 days. And then you're just listing throughout the day. What are you doing? Scale of one to five. Five is loved it. Where would you rate yourself? And then any additional notes, your mood or who you were working with, um, et cetera. 
And then over time, you can look at that and you'll start to see some patterns or themes show up as to what's giving you a lot of energy and what isn't. And sometimes it is outside of the workplace that you're finding that energy. And quite a few folks have that aha moment of, ooh, do I need to shift the role that I have in the organization? Do I need to do something different? Because I'm actually finding my hobbies and interests. I'm thriving in more than maybe what my day-to-day looks like. How important do you think in this in retrospection, introspection, these spections that we're, we're spending time in, right? How important do you think it is a question to ask ourselves, is this situation I'm in, is it, is it near term? Is it short? You know, is it, or is it going to, yes. is it going to be, is this changing forever type thing? Yes. In, in understanding the depth at which this change takes place in, in keeping perspective. What do you think? Oh, you're tapping into one of my favorite <laughs> questions. <laughs> is this a temporary pleasure or long-term fulfillment? Yeah. Um, vacation sometimes can be a quick temporary pleasure or it can be long-term fulfillment if the vacation is purpose-driven or that vacation um, helps you ideate because you've had a lot enough time to rest up where you're mind is just firing on all cylinders and it's your creative space or using that to write a book. So even vacations for a lot of people, you know, can amount to a long-term um, plan. But I love that. Is this a temporary pleasure or is this long-term fulfillment? Which is okay, right? I mean, mm-hmm. temp- I, 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 let's yep. not paint those, I think, as black and white or good yes. and bad or evil and good or whatever you want to, however you want to do that. I don't think it has to be that that Boolean expression of mm-hmm. of one or the other. I think there are moments, especially when we think about resiliency, where we need a moment to blow off some steam and a temporary, yes. like, hey, this isn't going to be this way all the time. And I'm kind of glad because it's not mm-hmm. sustainable, <laughs> right? But we need, yes. sometimes we need those moments, right? I think we need a combination yes. of those and how we approach that kind of matters on who we are as an individual, right? But Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we get caught in the trap of thinking it has to be an either or I have to Mm -hmm. be disciplined or I have to be adaptable. Like, no, discipline wins every time or no, adaptability wins every time. Well, hey, friends, they don't have to win. Like, This doesn't have to be a winning situation, right? They can. That's right. They can live. I think they can live together in that. I'm that may be physician healing myself in that statement, by the way. Yeah, I was (laughs) just thinking that. (laughs) Based on what you were sharing earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just re- realized as I said that I'm like, oh, yeah, yes. like, Jim, you probably need to apply that to yourself right now. Yes. Type deal. Type deal. We've got uh, Jacqueline, we have a final question. What what as we kind of wrap this up, Me this too. conversation today, what 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 other question would we have? Um, okay, so bringing it to the to the forefront, we've we've had our talent theme that's been a life jacket. We figured out the immediate action that we can take. We thought about the well-being need that might be misplaced. Who's a great support system for us? Um, what activities re-energize us to maybe give us that sense of hope and upbeat and excitability again? So now, as hope begins to come back into the fold, back into the forefront, what does your vision for the next three to six months look like? And how can you allow that to unfold using your talents? So now we can kind of see what that North Star might be if the North Star was fuzzy for a little bit. Okay. It's a little bit more clear. What's the next three to six months look like? Mm -hmm. Three to six months may be too short for some and too long for others. So I think that's a recommend. We throw Uh these, we throw these terms out, right? Uh, (laughs) Sometimes. And there's people who go into a panic, like six months, like yeah. that's too short. And others are like six months. I'm super bored already. So yes. Right? You know, yes. It's fun, funny, the perspective just on that. So I think it even that. A certain thinking, time frame. Yeah. The time frame that <laughs> works. The, for, <laughs> the time frame that works for you uh, in that setting to, to what kind of, as you think about you for a second and, and you think about some three to six months, you know, when, what you would want three to six months to look like for you, what kind of words come to mind for you? Let's just practice this a little bit as we think about mm-hmm. like, okay, so three to six months, let's just say spring for us. So we're, mm-hmm. we're talking first or second quarter of 2023. 
what if there was one maybe one word or one Ooh. idea for you what what where would you want to be in that time period do you think um around i use the word expansion Ooh, expansion okay. because there's a lot of things that i want to expand on in the next three to six months and my harmony friend helps me bring it back down <laughs> because futuristic achiever activator we want to go um discipline and focus i see it and it's so hard to let go of that sense of what the plan should be so expansion um would be my word expansion i like that yes expansion expansion Uh, uh, this is you you may have got to the heart of my my resiliency issue in that yes as i was thinking of this question yes i was like i don't know what next year even looks like i like i haven't even started Listen, I focused, the pandemic for me was a focused, I was at my best for the last two and a half years while we were going through this. And I know for some mm-hmm. of you, you're going to be like, stop. You really were. Like that was the, for me, that was a career moment. Like I was focused. I had a problem to work on. We had things to do. My life's completely different now. And I think for a lot of people, I, I'm going to say this for me, but I think there's some folks who are listening to this right now, whether live or you're listening on the podcast where you're in a completely different situation now than you were three years ago. Life's completely changed Mm -hmm. and you're coming out of this thing or what you're maybe for me, the crisis I'm going into, it's not, I'm Mm -hmm. not right. My, I, I thrived during the crisis of, of the pandemic. Now, now what, like, what am I going to point these talents to now? Like what, what's next? It's not real clear. It was super clear during the pandemic. Right? Yes. Super duper clear what to do. And I think because I'm a firefighter, not a farmer, yes. I, I run to chaos instead of running away from it. Right. I think that began to, that made priorities for me very, very clear. Well, maybe those priorities are getting a little unclear. Right. And I yes. know for a lot of people that sounds weird, but there may be a host Shifting. of people like me who are like, I can't see the future. I don't know. It was really clear for the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know. Any thoughts on, as I say that Jacqueline, does that invoke any thoughts? Of, I, of thinking yeah. through that? That's just, um, I could see where you're coming from because that was a crisis moment and adaptability. I always think of as being a firefighter, mm-hmm. like, Oh, I want to run to the fire. I want to put it out. Yeah. But now there is this, return to a new normal and it feels like everything is going back to the way it was. So I can see your perspective of where's the fire now? What am I supposed to put out? Yeah. I'm curious. I always, um, I've I've talked a lot about the, the power of walking and how that helps just get your thoughts into a flow and and it helps you ideate. Um, has now that the walking feels less, excitable and energizing for you how does that play into it well it's that's did you a good... used to walk and think yeah, I, I walked to was think. that was that yeah. what was exciting about walking yeah. was you get to kind of just process your thoughts and think of what next i'm walking through the cemetery and there's nothing mm-hmm. but me and my thoughts and it's an hour to myself of thinking through what the day was going to be like this is interesting. This is some Thinking live coaching. What the day right is going here. to be like, yeah. and now you don't know what the no. future looks like. So and I put this big TV on the front of my treadmill. So I have a for the winter. I have a treadmill in the house, and I use it pretty well. But I put this big TV on it, and mm-hmm. I haven't I, since I put the TV on it. I haven't walked on it once, and it's because the TV. Like you're getting to the point here. I think the TV is distracting to me because I watch YouTube yes. videos. And yes, I could sit there and leave the TV off, but walking in the same place for an hour is boring like that's just boring uh, uh, you know <laughs> yeah. i'm not gonna do it so yeah no i think maybe you've got to the crux of the issue at least for me huh. right of thinking yes. through like oh yeah maybe i'm not getting that thinking time and so it's not creating clarity on a daily basis for me of going into these situations and thinking through yes. it and that's thrown me a little bit off center a little bit and what mm-hmm. i probably just need to do is change my route i think it's as simple as that i just I'm, I'm mourning the fact that I don't, this sounds weird. Okay. This, this sentence is going to sound weird. I'm mourning the fact that I don't get to walk through the cemetery every day because it mm-hmm. is centering for me. It's quiet, mm-hmm. it's peaceful. I reflect on a lot of things while I'm in there. It's really good for me. So I'm mourning that a little bit. I, I got to go find a different route. Now it's not yes. like I'm locked down in the city. I can do it. Right. But 
Yeah. If for me, that's been huh. different. I, I imagine there's others who are thinking that exact same thing, not exactly the same, but in the same sense that like, ah, oh, things are changing back again. Yes. Right. They're changing and they're not changing back to the same. They're changing to something new. And now I've got to be resilient in this new set of changes or they got very comfortable with what the changes that were during the pandemic. And now it's a whole new set. Some of them are very excited about what's mm -hmm. for the future. Right. And, and are excited about these changes. I think Jacqueline, we've got some great questions through that you've outlined here. Let me encourage you to go back on the, the post that we do for this at a uh, It has a full transcript. And let me encourage you to go back through that. Mark will spend some time outlining these questions. Mm -hmm. He always really good about that. Use it as a resource and a tool. Use those questions. Um, think through them for both yourself. That's what we encouraged you at the beginning of this program to do is think through it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Your homework coaches or even people who want to be coaches or people who are just want to work with people. The challenge for you is how do we, how do you take these questions, turn them into powerful statements and questions for others, right? Mm -hmm. How can we use these in our relationships, not just at work, but maybe with family. Jacqueline, would you kind of wrap this for us? Final thoughts on this as we wrap it up? Yes. Um, you know, Lisa just uh, brought up a question too with the this idea of stability that I've I've brought up quite a few times in Hope. I didn't even I, I think subconsciously I just automatically go to the four needs of followers because it is mm. something that we can all just take to heart and and think about for ourselves. Um, since we need to put our own ear mask on first before we can support other people, but hope, stability, compassion, and trust, and hope and stability are it seems like those elements that have been pretty difficult for people. Um, and they're two elements that can lead to resiliency. So we do hope you like the, the six questions that we had today. And I love what you brought up, Jim, um, craft them, massage them, make them your own based on your own personality, your own coaching style, um, the audience that you have in front of you. But I always think about those baby steps because if someone is feeling less resilient in the moment, um, having them think big and broad when they can't even see what's right in front of them can be very, very difficult. So um, that was really the premise behind these six questions is how can we start to baby step people towards that sense of hope and, and resiliency? This series that we spent time doing here, um, you know, about difficulties in the workplace uh, n comes at a good time because mm -hmm. I think we, we, we shouldn't miss as we're, as we're coming back. We can't miss on these things everybody's so anxious to get back to normal and what we had before is gone. <laughs> it's gone. It's been blown yes. out. Of life, right? Yes. And what we have now, maybe a version of what we had before, but in a lot of ways, it's very, very different for some of you. You're celebrating that for, for others of you, that's a real disaster. And so we want to recognize that. And hopefully as we think about burnout and inclusion and now resiliency, you've gotten a great opportunity to think about this. If this is the first in the series you've listened to, you can go back to the other ones. We've named them such mm -hmm. on Yelp.com. Search either burnout, search inclusion, or search um, this one, resiliency, and you'll be able to find those. Um, Jacqueline, we're excited to announce the the, the new series yes. for 2023. <laughs> and um, what, what's exciting about it is we're getting, you can join us live. Uh, well, I guess if this is at the end of 2023 and you're hearing this, we've already recorded them all. But uh, starting <laughs> starting November 1st, uh, Jacqueline and I are back together talking about leadership. There's going to be a lot of focus on leadership over the next six months at Gallup, and uh, both internally in the new leadership report that's coming out and also some offerings for organizations around leadership. We'll have some things coming out uh, the, the first part of 2023, mm -hmm. but we'll spend some time talking about leadership one theme at a time. We're going to start recording those November 1st. Head out to gallop.eventbrite.com right now. Create an account. Follow us there so you can join us for the live recordings. Then we'll clean them up, throw them in the Clifton Strengths channel for the podcast channel and make those available on January 1st. And we'll have a whole series, all 34. And we're calling it season two of the Clifton Strengths podcast. We're pretty excited, Jacqueline, to think cool. about what you're hoping for in this series as we think about leadership. What are your what are your hopes and dreams uh, going forward? It's a big statement for just a podcast. I know. I'm dreams. so excited for it, though. Um, and coming off of this topic on resiliency, if we go to the work 
place and we're seeing we've um I think we've even teased out in the last couple of episodes how managers are the most burned out population right now. So focusing on the leadership, which is going to have that role in supporting them through it, um, supporting their well-being, helping them, you know, feel like they have this sense of stability. I think this is going to be such a good season to go into. Um, One for the leader, just to think about their own role, their own leadership style, how they influence how they manage their own responsibilities. But whenever we are coaching leaders, we can also help them think about how they can use those themes to influence the managers that are really burned out right now um, because we need them. (laughs) Managers, going back to that 70% of variance in employee engagement, we need them. And they've really carried the load of employees and leadership needs in these last few years. Um, so, I, you know, that's just recently come to mind, but I'm, I'm really excited we're focusing on leadership. Uh, me too, going into the year. And a lot of folks have, have asked, how does this fit into the manager report? Yes. And how does this fit into the sales, the sales report? And report. we're going to talk a little bit about it. Like all yeah, three of them come together. If you change the term sales to influence, which I do all the time, I think we mm-hmm. should have called it the influencer report because all the YouTube influencers. It would have been a good thing to do. But anyways, that would have been cool. um, uh, if you think about all three of those things, managing, influencing, and leading, those are all, uh, in they, listen, they all blend. They're like circles that come together mm-hmm. in some spots. But they all have distinct functions. And we're going to spend a little time talking about that here in season two. So yes. I'm pretty pumped about it. You can join us for the live recordings. We're going to kick off the live, but we didn't plan it this way. This is kind of uh, just the way it worked out. But our very first recording is November 1st, 2022. And if mm-hmm. you want to join us for the Canada kind of kickoff of the season. And then I've been posting the, the, the weekly events as they come up. Our schedule is all over the place. So I can't necessarily post one for them all because we need the flexibility of being able to, I mean, over four months, it's really hard to hold every single one of those to the same date. So mm-hmm. we're moving things around kind of based on schedule. So yes, you have to sign up for every single one if you want to join us live. You don't have to, but join us live. It's way more fun. We'll have a pre and a post show. We'll record two. It's kind of an event. We record two sessions in one. Mm-hmm. So if you come for one hour, you get both. You get to hear two how we one. make them. Yeah, you get to hear the post show. <laughs> The pre and the post show will be back for the, and the mid show will be back as well, which is always super fun. Mid and we'd, show. we'd love to have you join us for that hour. Head out to gallop.eventbrite right now. I uh, got the first couple ones out there. Sign up for those and I'll let you know. We'll send you email reminders and all that other good mm-hmm. stuff. Bill Jackson. And we're, we're kind of going out of order, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't bring Ooh. that up to the group. So I didn't we're not going to cause with any the, anxiety with Achiever anybody. this time. We're, <laughs> We're doing a little different. Uh, So for those that like the adaptability piece, (laughs) we're coming for you. Yeah, we we mixed them all up. So they're not, and you'll be like, what order is this in? Well, you'll have to figure (laughs) that out as we as we move forward. Um, so well, with that, we'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we do have available now in Gallup Access. Head out to gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths. For coaching, master coaching, or become a Gallup certified strengths coach, uh, you can send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. We'll get somebody to call you back and talk you through that. I mentioned this already, but stay up to date on all the Gallup webcasts. We have a bunch. I mean, not just that mm-hmm. series, but we have a whole bunch on how to use the leadership report coming up as well. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, they're all posted right now on Eventbrite. So go to gallup.eventbrite.com. You will for sure want to join us for the 2023 Gallup at Work Summit. It's going to be in person. Let me say that again. It's going to be in person. Yeah, it's going to be in person. It's going to be live. We have a virtual option as well. I'm really glad they're bringing the virtual option. Prices are on the site if you want to check it out, gallopatwork.com. And don't forget to join us in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash called to coach. And uh, you can find us on any social platform just by searching Clifton Strengths. I want to thank you for joining us today. We will do some post show if you're listening live. Thanks for, for those who did. We'll do some post-show. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.